Hasta la vista, baby. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a famous actor, bodybuilder, politician, and businessman who managed to realize his American dream. In this video, we'll tell you about how a poor immigrant managed to turn into a governor and a Hollywood actor with a huge fortune. Arnold Schwarzenegger, how Terminator lives and how he spends his millions. Arnold Aloya Schwarzenegger was born on July 30, 1947, in the community of Tal, Austria, into a Catholic family of Gustav and Aurelia. It is known that in 1938, his father joined the Nazi army of Germany, which Arnold would be very ashamed of in the future. Although his father didn't have any proven war crimes, during the Second World War, Gustav participated in the siege of Leningrad, where he was seriously wounded. Arnold's parents got married in 1945. At that time, Gustav was 38 years old, and Arelli was 23 years old. For the girl, this marriage was her second. Her first husband died in the war. In 1946, Gustav and Arelia had their first child, Meinhard, and a year later, Arnold, who became an outcast in the family. All because Gustav suspected his wife of infidelity and believed that Arnold was not his biological son. Schwarzenegger's childhood cannot be called happy because his duties included getting up at 6 in the morning and doing all the hard work before school. For any mistake, his father who worked as the local chief of police severely punished him and even gave him the nickname Cinderella. In addition, the family lived very poorly, but this only motivated Arnold to become successful in the future. Gustav was an athlete and demanded the same from his sons, so Arnold played soccer from a young age and a little later started weightlifting. When the boy turned 14, he went with a friend to Vienna to watch the World Weightlifting Championships. Arnold was among the spectators watching Soviet weightlifter Yuri Vlasov win the world title, becoming the first person to lift 445 pounds over his head. Schwarzenegger was so impressed by what he saw that he decided that day he would devote his life to bodybuilding. Since then, Arnold began to train daily and on weekends when the gym was closed, he would break in through the window and work out even harder. His parents were concerned with their son's new hobby. His mother, seeing posters of half-naked muscular men in his room, even suspected Arnold of being gay, and his father was dissatisfied with the nationality of his main idol, Vlasov, and demanded to find a German or Austrian icon. At 17, Arnold participated in his first bodybuilding competition in Graz, where he took second place. At 18, he was drafted into the army for a year. It was impossible to call Schwarzenegger a good soldier. During his service, he managed to drown a tank in a river, destroy a hangar, and even go AWOL just to participate in the Mr. Europe contest. Because of this violation, he was sent to the guardhouse, but after learning that he took first place in that competition, the officers released him and even gave him a two-day vacation. After his service ended in 1966, Schwarzenegger went to Munich, where he got a job at a fitness club. It is worth noting that back then, Arnold severed ties with his father and brother, who had humiliated him, and in the future, he didn't even attend their funerals. In Munich, the young man didn't have enough money at first, and he had to sleep on the floor in the gym. In addition, matters would get worse because of constant fines for street fights, which he initiated almost every day. In the same year, Arnold went to London for the Mr. Universe contest, where he unexpectedly took second place. The following year, he managed to win the long-awaited title at 20, becoming the youngest winner in the entire history of the competition. At the same time, Schwarzenegger participated in international powerlifting tournaments, where he repeatedly became a champion. The young man always wanted to live in the USA, and in 1968, he realized his dream by moving to California, where he continued his training. At first, Schwarzenegger stayed in the country illegally, and he was able to obtain citizenship only in 1983. In addition, the young man spoke English rather poorly, but it didn't prevent him from reaching for success. Back then, Schwarzenegger already earned his first million a few years before the start of his acting career. Arriving in California, 
He opened a bricklaying business with a friend. Because of the earthquake in San Fernando, the demand for building materials increased and with it, the company's profit. The guys invested the money they earned in a new business, mailing out equipment and VHS tapes with instructions for bodybuilding and fitness. In 1969, Arnold met a teacher, Barbara Baker, who became his first love. The young man, of course, was infamous for numerous affairs, but before meeting Barbara, he didn't really love anyone. In the same year, Schwarzenegger participated for the first time in the Mr. Olympia contest, where he took second place. In the next year, he managed to win the competition and at 23, became the youngest champion in the entire history of the competition. This record hasn't been broken so far. At the same time, his acting career began. Arnold's film debut, was the lead role in Hercules in New York in 1970. But in the credits, he appeared under the last name Strong, since his real one seemed too difficult. What's your second name, Hercules what? As I've told you, I'm Hercules, the son of Zeus. I don't think it needs any disrespect, Captain. It probably was in the translation. All right, all right. Sign him on as Hercules Zeus since he says that's his father's name and give him an OS rating, bosun. Aye, aye, sir. His character's lines were also dubbed over because of his strong Austrian accent. A joke started circulating in Hollywood that only Schwarzenegger's accent is thicker than his muscles. Arnold considers his debut role the most unsuccessful. At the same time, it brought him $12,000. Then there were the roles in the films Happy Anniversary and Goodbye, The Streets of San Francisco, The San Pedro Beach Bums, and Stay Hungry. For the latter, Schwarzenegger was awarded the Golden Globe Award for New Star of the Year. Meanwhile, Arnold had no equal in bodybuilding. For six years, he was the permanent holder of the title Mr. Olympia and rightfully became a bodybuilding legend. Having reached all possible heights, Schwarzenegger announced his retirement from sports in 1975. A year before this event, he broke up with his beloved. The reason was Arnold's unwillingness to marry and have children which the girl wanted so much. After parting with Barbara, he met hairdresser Sue Murray, who shared his views on an open relationship. In 1977, Schwarzenegger, while in a relationship, started dating the journalist Maria Shriver, the niece of the 35th US President John F. Kennedy. This went on for a year, after which Sue insisted that Arnold decide between the girls. He chose Maria, whose relatives, by the way, were not happy about the potential son-in-law. During that period, Schwarzenegger starred in several films, The Villain, Scavenger Hunt, The Jane Mansfield Story, and Conan the Barbarian. The latter can be considered his first successful in his career. Priest's rope? Yes, it's all I have. Good. <laughs> That's all you'll ever need. Even though he was nominated for the Golden Raspberry Anthe Award for the worst male role, the actor's payout then amounted to $250,000. Arnold performed all the stunts himself, so he returned to strength training. Having got in good shape, he decided to participate in the Mr. Olympia contest again, which he won. In 1984, the actor appeared in the sequel, Conan the Destroyer, which brought him $1 million. Later, the film Conan the Conqueror was supposed to come out, but Arnold was busy with another project, so the trilogy remained unfinished. In the same year, the action movie The Terminator was released, which became the most recognizable film with Schwarzenegger. His character's phrase, I'll be back, became the hallmark of the actor. I'll be back and also appeared in 37th place in the list of the 100 best quotes from films. Interestingly, the scene with this phrase took nine takes to film. For The Terminator, Arnold earned $750,000 and was also nominated for the Saturn Award for Best Actor. I think this guy's a couple cans short of a six pack. You're close. Give them to me, now. Fuck you, asshole. In 1985, the rising star was invited to star in the action movie Commando, which was well received by the public and brought Schwarzenegger $1.5 million. You scared, motherfucker? Well, you should be, because this green beret is going to kick your big ass. 
I eat green berets for breakfast. And right now I'm very hungry. I can't believe this macho bullshit. The actor performed all the stunts himself simply because it was hard to find a stuntman with the same physique. Although the lovemaking scene he did was so unconvincing that they had to cut it. In the same year, the film Red Sonja was released in which Danish actress Bridget Nielsen became Arnold's partner on the set. A stormy relationship flared between them, although at that time, Arnold was already engaged to Maria. After the filming was completed, the actor broke up with Nielsen, who didn't want to stay a mistress and threatened to tell his fiance everything. Then Schwarzenegger introduced Bridget to his friend Sylvester Stallone, whom she soon married. In 1986, Arnold got married too, with Maria Shriver. He had four children, Catherine, Christina, Patrick, and Christopher. A few months after the wedding, the film Raw Deal was released, in which he got the lead role. Schwarzenegger's acting career was gaining momentum, and with it, the payouts were growing. In 1987, he starred in two films, Predator and The Running Man, for which he earned $3 million and $5 million, respectively. Both films were well received by the public, and for Predator, Arnold was even nominated for Best Actor at the Saturn Film Award. At the same time, he received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In 1988, Schwarzenegger appeared in the film Red Heat. His payout was $8 million. In the same year, with his appearance in the movie Twins with Danny DeVito, the actor proved that he can play comedy roles perfectly. My name is Julius, and I'm your twin brother. Oh, obviously. The moment I sat down, I thought I was looking into a mirror. The movie creator couldn't afford to pay the two actors, so they agreed to a percentage of sales, and it was worth it. The comedy had such a resounding success at the box office that Arnold received his biggest income of $35 million. The actor has repeatedly stated that he considers this film the best in his career. In the early 1990s, Schwarzenegger starred in the film's Kindergarten Cop, for which he received $12 million, Total Recall for $10 million, and Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Hasta la vista, baby. Yeah, or later, dick one. And if someone gets upset, you say, chill out. Or you could do combinations. Chill out, dick what? That's great. For the last two films, Arnold was nominated for the Best Actor category at the Saturn Film Awards. By the way, the actor preferred to receive the $15 million for the second part of The Terminator, In Kind, and asked for a Gulfstream 3 plane. Then, Schwarzenegger added the following films to his filmography. Dave, Beretta's Island, Last Action Hero, Junior, and True Lies. For the latter three, Arnold received payouts for $15 million each. Those works were awarded various nominations, and most of them Arnold received for the action movie True Lies in the category's Best Actor, Best Kiss, and Best Dance Sequence. Do you still love your husband? Yes, I love him. I've always loved him. In 1996, Arnold appeared in the comedy Jingle All the Way and in the action movie Eraser, where his partner on set was Vanessa Williams, with whom, according to rumors, he had a fleeting affair. For each of the films, the actor earned $20 million. In the next few years, Schwarzenegger starred in the films Batman and Robin, End of Days, and The Sixth Day. Even though the actor earned $72 million in total for these films, his acting was heavily criticized, and for each of these roles, he was nominated for the Golden Raspberry Anti-Award as the worst actor. In the early 2000s, Arnold appeared in the films Collateral Damage, for which he earned $25 million, and Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines, for a payout of about $30 million. DX is designed to terminate other cybernetic organisms. So, she's an anti-Terminator... Terminator? You've got to be shitting me. No, 
I am not shitting you. After the release of the long-awaited sequel, Schwarzenegger announced his retirement from the film industry and the beginning of his political career. Despite the skepticism, in 2003, he was elected the 38th governor of California with 1.3 million votes. Even though Arnold's wife is a representative of the Democratic Kennedy clan, Schwarzenegger himself is a dedicated Republican. Arnold's political activity caused a contradictory reaction from the public, and the powerful opposition seriously lowered his rating. But in 2006, Schwarzenegger was re-elected for a second term, during which he stood out for his policy of reducing costs refusing the governor's salary, but all the efforts to save money by laying off civil servants and raising taxes ended with mass protest by trade unions. As a result, the state led by Arnold suffered more than the others from the consequences of the global crisis. During this period, Arnold did not have time to act in movies. In 2004, the pre-film film Around the World in 80 Days was released for the role in which he was nominated for another Golden Raspberry. By the way, in 2005, Arnold still received a special anti-award, becoming the worst Razzie loser of the first 25 years. Schwarzenegger stepped away from political affairs only for The Expendables in 2010, where he played a cameo role. Even in the fourth part of The Terminator, they had to use a digital image of the actor. In 2011, Arnold's second and last term as governor came to an end, so he returned to the cinema. According to some reports, during his political career, the actor missed the opportunity to earn $200 million in the film industry. Changes have also occurred in his personal life. After 25 years of marriage, Arnold announced that he and his wife were divorcing. Maria loved her husband very much and turned a blind eye to numerous infidelities, but she couldn't forgive one of them. The reason was their governess Mildred, whose son Joseph was surprisingly similar to Schwarzenegger. When Maria figured out that Joseph was Arnold's son, the marriage ended. In 2012, the actor appeared in The Expendables 2, for which he earned $10 million, even though all his scenes were shot in just five days. I need a weapon. Something big. Yours! Whoa, 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 whoa. My big weapon's hanging right where it is. Come on, Caesar, you gotta back up. If I don't get this back, your ass is terminated. In your dreams. In his spare time, Arnold gives motivational lectures around the world. He has written many books on bodybuilding, and in 2012, his autobiography, Total Recall, came out. The following year, Arnold starred in the films The Last Stand with a payout of $5 million in Escape Plan. Then he added several others to his filmography, like Sabotage, Maggie, Two and a Half Men, and The Expendables 3. And for the latter, he received another nomination for Golden Raspberry. In 2015, the film Terminator Genesis was released. Won't be needing any clothes. I've been waiting for you. It was decided not to hide Arnold Schwarzenegger's age with CGI. Instead, the writers decided to explain that the living tissue that covers the Terminator can age, and the robot's hair can turn gray. During the same period, it became known about Arnold's affair with physiotherapist Heather Milligan, who is 27 years younger than him. In 2017, Arnold appeared in the films Kill Gunther and Aftermath, which turned out to be commercially unsuccessful. In 2019, he starred in the films Terminator, Dark Fate, and V2, Journey to China, for which he again received a nomination for Golden Raspberry. Exercise, gentlemen. Perfect your bodies. Remember, a healthy body houses a healthy mind. Manzana in corpo sano. Exercise. Even though Schwarzenegger's acting is constantly being criticized, offers from directors continue to come, and soon, we will see new films with Iron Arnold. In 2021, Schwarzenegger's divorce process, which lasted 10 years, was completed. It took that long because the spouses hadn't signed a prenup at the time, so they had to share their jointly acquired property, and there was a lot of it. Today, Arnold's fortune is estimated at $450 million, 
which he earned through films, lectures, and advertising contracts. Arnold appeared in advertisements for a Japanese energy drink, BMW iX electric car, World of Tanks, and mobile strike games, Bud Light Beer, and others. Schwarzenegger invested money in securities of large companies, including Coca-Cola, Starbucks, and Google. Most of all, the actor liked to invest money in real estate, Nowadays, the value of Arnold's commercial real estate alone exceeds $100 million. But still, the center of his financial empire is the company Oak Productions, through which he receives payouts from film studios and percentages from comic and video game sales. At one time, the Schwarzeneggers owned a restaurant in Santa Monica, but in 1998, the establishment was sold. Also, together with LeBron James, Arnold founded a dietary supplement production company. Before the divorce, the couple lived in the Brentwood neighborhood of Los Angeles, where their children grew up. The mansion has an area of about 11,000 square feet. It includes nine bedrooms, several living rooms, a spacious kitchen, and a dining room. There is also a garden, a patio, a swimming pool with a unique geometric shape, and a tennis court. In 2013, this family nest was sold for $13 million. Now the Hollywood star lives in a one-story house with a large plot of land on the outskirts of Los Angeles with his favorite pets, Husky Dutch, Yorkshire Terrier Cherry, Donkey Lulu, and Pony Whiskey. Arnold owns a huge collection of cars, which includes Dodge Challenger SRT8, Excalibur Series 3 Phaeton, Hummer H1, Dodge M37, exclusive Jeep Grand Wagoneer Governator, Porsche 911, Mercedes SLS, Gallon Wagon Chrysler with an electric motor, Bugatti Veyron Grand Sport Vitez, a Mercedes model specially created for Iron Arnold, and even a real M47 tank, the model he drove in the army. The actor bought it from the Austrian government for $1.4 million. The celebrity spends a significant part of his income on charity. Back in 1995, Schwarzenegger founded an organization that provides an opportunity for children from low-income families to get an education. The foundation also helps fight against HIV, AIDS, and other diseases. For example, in 2020, Arnold allocated $1 million to support medical workers, and in 2021, spent $250,000 to build 25 houses for veterans. In addition, he collaborated with the organization Velos, which is engaged in the popularization of electric vehicles. Now Iron Arnold is rightfully considered a fan's favorite. A monument was erected in his honor. A programming language and even a Costa Rican ground beetle were named after him. And the Guinness Book of Records called him the most perfectly developed man in the history of the world. Do you like Arnold Schwarzenegger? Julia Roberts, How Pretty Woman Lives and Where She Is Now. The future icon of romantic comedies was born on October 28, 1967, in Smyrna, Georgia. Julia Flona was the third child in the family. She had an older brother, Eric Roberts, and a sister, Lisa. They also chose acting as a profession. All the children of the Roberts family were drawn to the big screen for a reason. Their parents were also people of art. The father of the family, Walter Grady Roberts, was simultaneously a seller of water mattresses, an actor, and a writer. Julia's mother, Betty Lou, was a Paris secretary and part-time actress. Together, they ran an acting school and were in a difficult financial situation by the time they had baby Julia. Coincidentally, the children of Martin Luther King attended their school, and it was he who paid the hospital bill for Julia's mother in the maternity hospital as a sign of gratitude for the attention to his children. In 1971, when Julia was four years old, Betty Lou filed for divorce, and the following year she moved into a new house and married theater critic Michael Motes, with whom they had a daughter, Nancy. In 1983, this marriage also broke up. Betty called her second marriage a big mistake, since her husband did not like her children from the first marriage and even used physical violence against them. 
As an adult, Julia has never made her memories of a difficult childhood public out of respect for her mother and stepsister. But the actress's brother, Eric, would later state that their stepfather was a monster and turned their life into a nightmare. After the mother's second divorce, the children had to go to work to make money for a living. From the age of 13, Julia worked as a waitress at a pizza place while studying at Griffin High School in Campbell College. The future celebrity was fond of playing the clarinet, took part in local beauty contests, but never won. Classmates considered her ugly and bullied her for her tall height, big mouth, and thinness. The actress is very critical of her appearance, despite the fact that she is constantly presented in various ratings of the most beautiful women in the world. Robert said she has grasshopper legs, horse teeth, and straw for hair. With all this, she is opposed to plastic surgery and doesn't like makeup and flashy clothes. Her brother Eric played a big role in her acting career, whose success deeply impressed young Julia, and she began to participate in amateur productions. But initially her dream was to become a veterinarian, as she loved animals very much. After graduating from high school, Julia entered Georgia State University and then moved to New York with her sister to try her hand at film acting. There she signed a contract with a modeling agency and began attending acting courses. In addition, the young actress began to train her pronunciation, since her southern accent was inappropriate on the screen. Soon the girl abandoned acting courses because she didn't see any results from them and began to visit auditions. By the way, when she joined the Actors Guild of the USA, she had to change her birth name from Julie to Julia, since another actress named Julie Roberts was already registered there. The next step on the way to success was a trip to Hollywood to move in with her brother, who had already achieved success in the movies. It turned out that the American film industry didn't need another provincial actress with a specific smile, which became the first serious disappointment for the young actress. In 1987, she managed to get only a small role in the TV series, Crime Story, and the movie Firehouse. At first, her brother helped her a lot, and even invited Julia for a small role of his character's sister in the action movie Blood Red, which was released three years after filming. But soon he got tired of babysitting his sister and declared that it was time for her to take care of herself. Who knows, maybe if she hadn't gotten that kick in the rear, she wouldn't have been so successful. But young Julia then considered this an act of betrayal and even stopped communicating with her brother. Later, she took revenge on him by helping his ex-wife with the divorce lawsuit. Tabloids still write that their relationship hasn't recovered. After losing her main assistant and conquering the big screen, Julia continued to improve her acting skills by entering a dance studio and learning how to play various instruments. Without the help of her brother, the actress starred in the TV show Miami Vice. In the movie Satisfaction, Julia portrayed a girl playing in a rock band, and for this role, she learned how to play drums and bass. On the set of the project, Julia met Liam Neeson, with whom she started dating. Roberts was 19 at the time and Liam was 35. This union didn't last long. The couple broke up soon after moving in together since Julia declared that she wasn't ready for family life and immediately moved out. Also in 1988, the actress was invited for a role in the comedy Mystic Pizza, for which she had to dye her brown hair black. For this picture, the actress, who is gaining popularity, received $50,000, and the next role of Julia Roberts in the 1989 Steel Magnolias made both critics and viewers talk about her as one of the most promising actresses in America. My reception, my reception, ferns, dancing, tons of people, every pink flower west of the Mississippi, wedding cake in the dining room and the groom's cake. In this film, Julia played a minor but memorable role of a diabetic girl preparing for a wedding. The film became a blockbuster, collecting $80 million in America. Robert received $90,000 for her performance, a Golden Globe Award, and an Oscar nomination in the Best Supporting Actress category. By the way, Julia met a new boyfriend on the set, Dylan McDermott, who proposed to the girl, but the wedding never took place. In 1990, Julia took part in the movie Flatliners, which brought the actress $500,000 and a new lover, Kiefer Sutherland, with whom she even got engaged. The actor was the reason for Julia's breakup with her previous boyfriend. They were supposed to have the wedding of the year, but meanwhile tabloids caught Julia with a close friend of Kiefer, Jason Patrick. However, this wedding was not destined to happen since the girl broke off the engagement three days before the ceremony, running away with the groom's friend to Ireland, for which she was given the nickname Runaway Bride, which she will confirm more than once abruptly ending relationships. Also in 1990, Julia Roberts starred in many girls' favorite movie, Pretty Woman. Oh, honey. 
You know what's happened? I've got a runner in my pantyhose. I'm not wearing pantyhose. It's one of the most famous romantic comedies which has become a classic. The original title of the film was $3,000 because it was the amount agreed upon by the main characters. And Vivian, played by Julia, was supposed to be a drug addict and die of an overdose at the end of the film, according to one screenplay. Or go to Disneyland with a friend in an alternative ending. But the director remade all the dark scenes and added a happy ending. During the preparation for filming, Julia spent a lot of time with director Gary Marshall's wife, who ran a free clinic on Hollywood Boulevard in order to learn how to behave like Vivian. It's interesting that during the filming of an intimate scene with Richard Gere, the young actress was so nervous that a vein popped out on her forehead. It was visible on camera, so the director and Gere had to massage the actress's forehead. In the scene where Vivian watches old comedies, they had to tickle Julia's heels to achieve genuine laughter from the actress. Julia's dog was present at the shooting. It didn't appreciate the romantic scene between Julia and Richard and started barking. So the scene had to be reshot several times. The actors also had a very busy schedule and Roberts didn't have time to eat. Eventually she became ill and fainted. Then Marshall helped her again, feeding the actress tuna. Another fun fact, on the Pretty Woman poster, there's only Julia's head and the body belongs to her understudy. Apparently Roberts had no time for shooting posters. Pretty Woman was a huge success all over the world, and although critics reacted somewhat cool to the picture, it earned about $180 million only in the United States, bringing Roberts a second Oscar nomination as Best Actress and a second Golden Globe. The actress's earnings for the movie amounted to $300,000. Roberts' success made her a real movie star and allowed her to increase the levels of her fees. In 1991, the thriller Sleeping with the Enemy was released, for which she was paid a million dollars which made 23-year-old Julia the youngest actress to receive a seven-figure fee. Listen, there's only one more thing I'm going to ask, only one thing I want to know. Do you have a name? In the same year the film Dying Young, starring long-haired Julia, was released, where her fee was $3 million, as well as the fairy tale of Peter Pan Hook, for which the actress was paid $7 million. Meanwhile, she had a fleeting affair with James Foley. In the following years, the actress starred in the movie The Player and the thriller The Pelican Brief that brought Roberts $8 million. You mean you skipped class and ignored me for a week and now you're throwing it away? Let me see it. Don't laugh. It was ludicrous of me to think that I could solve it. The image of Darby Shaw was written specifically for Julia Roberts. She immediately agreed to the role after reading the book. Also in 1993, Julia herself proposed to country singer Lyle Lovett after dating him for only a few weeks. There was a wedding, but the couple lived together only for two years and then peacefully divorced on their own initiative. The actress's next project was a 1994 action movie with elements of drama and comedy, I Love Trouble. Fun fact, the main character jokes about Julia's character, Sabrina, saying that he liked the article where she portrayed a prostitute, which was a reference to Pretty Woman. In the next few years, Julia starred in the films pret a Porte, Something to Talk About, Everyone Says I Love You, Michael Collins, and Mary Riley, which brought the actress $8.5 million. In 1996, Julia took part in the famous and highly rated TV show Friends, on the set of which she began an affair with Matthew Perry, but the actor was using drugs, so they quickly broke up, since it was unacceptable for Julia. Excuse me. Nah. Oh. <laughs> uh, is your name Chandler? Uh, yes, yes it is. Chandler Vane. Do you know me, or are you just really good at this game? I'm Susie Moss. Soon Julia found love again. It was the actor Daniel Day-Lewis with whom she was going to star in Shakespeare in Love. They met several times in London, but when the actor refused the role, their relationship ended. In those years, the lovable actress had relationships with Ethan Hawke and her personal coach Pat Minocchia, which also ended quickly. In 1997, two films were released at once, which significantly made Julia Roberts richer. 
It was conspiracy theory with a fee of $11 million and the drama My Best Friend's Wedding, which brought the actress $12 million. Julia personally selected the actors for this movie, choosing Cameron Diaz and Dermot Mulroney. Right off, I have this monstrous favor to ask you. Excuse me? My best friend Angelique shattered her pelvis line dancing in Aveline over spring break. Be my maid of honor? What? This period was extremely successful for Roberts, whose movies certainly became box office hits, and everyone wanted her for the main role. Soon the actress found a new admirer, Benjamin Bratt. As Julie admitted, she fell in love with the swarthy, handsome man at first sight when she saw him on the street. The couple was together for four years, and the guy was given the nickname Mr. Roberts by the media. In 1998, the actress appeared in the TV series Murphy Brown and the movie Stepmom, and a year later in an episode of Law and Order. In general, 1999 was rich in both fees and movies. The actress, along with Hugh Grant, starred in the drama Notting Hill, where she demonstrated her talent for improvisation. The scene in which Anna, Julia's character, chastises a noisy company of men in a restaurant wasn't from the script. An interesting coincidence, the fee for her character's last picture is equal to the amount paid to Julia for shooting in the film, $15 million. Turn over four TRSs and tell them we need radar feedback before the KFTs return at 1900. Then inform the Pentagon we'll need black star cover from 1000 through 1215. And if you say one word about how many mistakes I made in that speech, I'll pelt you with olives. For this work, Julia was nominated for a Golden Globe. Meanwhile, another film was released in which the actress allegedly played herself. It was Runaway Bride. I don't know. I, I, I frankly, I don't even want to talk about it. Me neither. <laughs> On the set, Julia worked with director Gary Marshall again. Roberts used to entertain his grandchildren with a platypus face, which he liked so much that he used it in the frame of the film. By the way, Julia agreed to the shooting on the condition that it would be a single film without a sequel since she didn't want to star in sequels. In 2000, Erin Brockovich was released, which became a real triumph for Julia. I'm doing this for us. I know it's hard for you to understand, but... Don't you want mommy to be good at her job? Hmm? It not only became a box office hit, but also brought the actress an Oscar, a BAFTA award, and a third Golden Globe, as well as an Actors Guild Award. The fee amounted to an unprecedented amount at that time, $20 million, making Roberts the first actress to cross this milestone. By the way, Julia is left-handed, but her character is not, so the actress had some difficulties on the set, for example, with signing papers. The actress appeared at the Oscar ceremony wearing one of the most expensive dresses to have ever been worn at this event, which cost her almost $100 million. The following year on the set of The Mexican, Julia met her current husband, Daniel Motor, a cinematographer who was married at that moment. Julia was paid $5 million for the movie. Next, Ocean's Eleven came out with a payout of $10 million. You're 30 seconds late. I was about to send out sir. Oh, it is. What are you doing here? An America's Sweethearts, in which Julia refused the main role in favor of a minor role, but it did not prevent her from earning $15 million. In 2002, Motor and Roberts got married, which came as a surprise to everyone. It was even rumored that Roberts paid an impressive sum to Daniel's ex-wife so that she would agree to speed up the divorce. Very little is known about the wedding ceremony. Julia was wearing a pink cotton dress and Moda was wearing a shirt with a frill collar. Later, the actress admitted that she and Danny made matching tattoos with each other's initials shortly before the wedding, but the letters are located where no one will see them. Later, the couple settled in a luxurious mansion in Malibu with a tennis court for $9.5 million. In that year, Julia starred in the film's Full Frontal, Grand Championship, and George Clooney's directorial debut, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, in which the actress agreed to act for friendship's sake for a symbolic $250,000. The next film, released in 2003, brought the actress as much as $25 million. It was the drama Mona Lisa Smile. Joe. Hello. How are you? Great, thank you so much for this. You're a pal. It's a pleasure. Your timing is perfect. This was followed by the sequel, Ocean's 12, which made Roberts richer by $5 million. It is called Marcus, 
and have him get a hold of Louise so okay. we can make arrangements to send someone down there to get it. He's home now, right? Oh. Marcus. I need to, you know, I need to talk to Marcus. By the way, during the filming, the actress was pregnant with twins. Next came the movie Closer with a payout of $20 million. In the same year, Julia gave birth to a boy, Phineas Walter, and a girl, Hazel Patricia. The actress was warned by doctors that due to poor blood clotting, there was a high risk of death during childbirth, which came prematurely, but fortunately, it turned out fine. In 2006, Roberts made a deal with the famous designer, Gianfranco Ferret, and starred in his advertisement for a new collection of sunglasses. For it, the actress was paid $5 million. After a short break in 2006, Julia voiced the cartoon Charlotte's Web and Aunt Bully. This was followed by the movies Charlie Wilson's War, for which the actress was nominated for a Golden Globe, and Fireflies in the Garden, which was directed by Julia's husband, Daniel. In this film, Julia played the mother of Ryan Reynolds' character, although in real life she is only nine years older than her on-screen son. But the on-screen pregnancy was real, and soon the family had a younger son, Henry. But the actress didn't rest for long, and already in 2009 she was in business, starring in the film Duplicity for $15 million, and a year later in Valentine's Day, which brought another $3 million. In the same year, another bestseller was released, the biographical drama Eat, Pray, Love, I just spent some time in Rome, and I came here feeling so great. Now, here I am at the source, and I feel more disconnected than ever. Roberts bought the rights to the film adaptation of the novel of the same name herself and played the main role there. By the way, after filming, in an interview, the actress admitted that she is a Hindu like her husband and they periodically visit Hindu temples with the whole family. In the same year, an advertising video of the Lavazza coffee brand was released with Julia. For the role without words in the 45-second video, the actress was paid $1.35 million. At the same time, Roberts was announced as the face of the Lancome brand. The actress was offered a unique contract for the company, five years of cooperation and $50 million. The following year, the actress voiced the romantic comedy Love, Wedding, Marriage and starred in the film with Tom Hanks' Larry Crown. And in 2012, she played the evil queen in the family fantasy movie Mirror, Mirror. Bread is meat. Less is more. Blah, blah, blah. Commoners love a good metaphor. Just go sell it. Bread is meat. At first, Roberts, as said in an interview, was a thousand percent against this film and considered starring in it a terrible idea. But after meeting with the director, she changed her mind. The actress said that her costumes were very heavy and made it difficult for her to move, and she even pulled the muscle by turning too quickly, and filming had to be suspended. Moreover, the actress's children were hiding under voluminous ball gowns, but still between takes, Julia decided to take them away so that they would not hear her character's speech and would not be afraid. The children, although interested, didn't watch that film so that they would not find the character of their mother unpleasant. By the way, the transformation of Roberts into an old witch with a poisoned apple was kept a secret until the release of the film. At this time, a tragedy happened in the actress's family. Julia's half-sister Nancy died. The cause of death was an overdose on medications, and a suicide note was found next to the body in which Nancy told all about her relationship with her half-sister on three pages and accused Julia of driving her to suicide. She blamed the beautiful sister for the fact that she had caused mental trauma by making fun of her for her obesity. In 2013, Julia joined the Gucci charity program in which she paid special attention to the problem of harmful smoke that is breathed during cooking. The actress plans to replace bad stoves with working ones in poor areas of Africa. A year later, Roberts became the face of Givenchy, presenting herself in a new unusual image, strong and determined, without styling and almost without makeup. By the way, the actress prefers to lie down when makeup is applied to her, as she believes that in this way the results look more natural. In the next few years, the actress starred in the films August the Sage County, The Normal Heart, Art, Secret in Their Eyes, Money Monster, and Mother's Day. The latter brought Julia $3 million, and the family drama Wonder brought her a fee of $6 million. Okay. Open your eyes. No! You, you finished your thesis? Let's get drunk. Yes! In 2018, the actress took part in the TV series Homecoming, for which she received another $600,000, and in the drama Ben is Back. 
In 2019, Roberts became the face of the Italian brand Calzadonia, and in 2020, Chappard released a promotional video of Happy Sport Watches starring Julia, in which she is carelessly dancing and enjoying life. A few releases are expected in the following years. The drama series Gaslit, about the Watergate scandal, the romantic comedy Ticket to Paradise, and the drama The Friday Night Knitting Club, based on the book of the same name by Kate Jacobs. By the way, Julie is the most famous knitter in Hollywood. She comes up with complex schemes and can knit anything, from a scarf to a coat or a bag. At home, she has a whole workshop for different types of needlework, and she carries yarn with her to set so as not to sit around in her free time. Interestingly enough, all the years that Julie has been married to Danny, their marriage has been predicted to end soon. For example, in 2018, the actress was not seen in the company of her husband for almost nine months, but the paparazzi still managed to catch the couple while walking on the beach. And after that, the actress herself shared cute family photos with followers. And last year, the couple celebrated their 19th anniversary of their wedding. On this occasion, the actress shared a photo which showed that over the years, the feelings have not weakened. Recently, the 50-year-old actress has been acting less and even said that due to her life experience, she will no longer act in romantic films. She spends a lot of time with her loved ones on a ranch in New Mexico with a house with an area of 8,000 square feet. Julia has a small farm where she raises chickens and she has only organic vegetables and fruits on her table since the star also manages the vegetable garden herself and even knows how to drive a tractor. The celebrity emphasizes that her family comes first and she tries to protect her children from journalists as much as possible. This year the twins turned 17 and only in honor of this, happy parents shared rare pictures of the children. Nowadays, Julia Roberts' fortune is $250 million, and she earns from $20 to $30 million a year from films and advertising. The actress is rumored to have insured her famous smile for as much as $30 million. The actress prefers to invest money in real estate. At various times, she purchased several houses in Hawaii. She sold one of them with a 50% discount for $16.2 million, the other one, with a view of the Pacific Ocean, sold for $17 million. Another Snow White penthouse, which Roberts decided to say goodbye to, is located in Manhattan, with an area of 6,500 square feet and a view of New York. This sold for $4.5 million. Julie also has a house in Malibu, which she rents out for $10.5,000 a month. Inside, the walls and ceilings of wood are painted white, which along with the large windows creates a sense of space, and the actress sold another house in a cozy ranch style for $8 million. In 2020, the actress purchased a five-story house in San Francisco, built in 1907 and renovated. The mansion has five bedrooms, four bathrooms, an office, a modern kitchen, a dining room, and several places to relax. And a few years ago, Julia bought a house with a skate park for her children, next door to their main mansion in Malibu. The celebrity owns a Mercedes GL320 CDI and a Toyota Prius, and last year an announcement appeared in Kazakhstan about the sale of a 33-year-old Rolls Royce that used to belong to the actress. The fact of owning a car by Julia Roberts increased the price of the car to as much as $7 million, although it costs no more than two. Now Julia's popularity, as well as the amount of fees, is not waning. She is still in demand, although she does not try to act too often. Do you like the pretty woman, Julia Roberts? If you like the video, leave a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything interesting.